All right, so let's talk a little bit about lighting at a wedding and more specifically talk about lighting a speech at a wedding reception. You know if you've done it before, it can certainly be a challenge and it can almost seem like everyone is working against you, whether it's the DJ complaining that you're ruining his wedding ambiance or something like that, or just the subject itself who just doesn't seem to wanna to stay put. They wanna move out of your light, move back in, and they can be a pain as well. Lighting a toast well and lighting it super consistently is really entering wedding film mastery where you get the shot that you want, you're also getting the audio that sounds great, and then adding light to it is really the third element that goes into it and just makes your wedding film sing. We're gonna talk about how to get a consistent lighting setup no matter what the setting is every single wedding. Let's go do it. This way, even though we're going that way. We're gonna <laughs> okay, so before we hop in and do a little bit of lighting, I just wanted to mention that this video is brought to you by our friends over at Kinotenic, the creators of this awesome, amazing, legendary Practilite. This is the light that we're gonna be using inside and we own plenty of them ourselves, so it's actually something we use week in and week out. And they are offering Wedding Film School watchers and subscribers um, an amazing deal. If you head over to their website, kinotenic.com, put in your order and type in the promo code WFS25, you'll receive 25% off your entire order on this light. It comes in black, it comes in white, great options, great light. Let's head inside and see what it can do. Let's talk through a couple instances. The first one I'm gonna call the three shot. And the three shot is gonna be when a bride and groom sits at their table and the person that's gonna be speaking is standing literally next to them. And I found that photographers and DJs tend to prefer this setup. It's a little less moving parts. I think it's just easier for most wedding vendors, but it can pose some challenges to you as a wedding filmmaker. The other setup is going to be what I call a one in one shot. And this is gonna be when the speaker is out, maybe on the dance floor, away from the bride and groom, kind of giving a more of a perspective of what the audience is looking at, looking at the bride and groom. And this is something that I'm going to prefer when I'm setting up my lighting because it allows us to have a little bit more control. So let's actually start with our lights themselves. And you'll notice that I have them on 12 foot stands. I really like the 12 foot stand because it just gives us a little bit more options. It also gives us a wider base at the bottom, which I think is a little bit more safe. We also have our lights that are mounted here with V-mounts. Uh, this is the Nano 98. I usually find this is plenty of battery life to last for a three hour reception with these lights on full power, if we deem to do that. Now that we've got our gear down, let's head over to our first setup and get this looking awesome. Okay, so for this setup, I'm actually right in the middle of our dance floor. And on one side, we have where our speaker is going to stand. And then on the other side, I have where our bride and groom is going to sit and listen to their toast. With this setup, typically you're going to either want to bring your own mic stand or use a mic stand that the DJ is going to bring. Why, you might ask? It's essentially to lock in your subject into one spot. If you have a handheld microphone, they're not gonna stay where your lighting is. They're gonna come on out, they're gonna walk around and be a little bit distracted. So when you're setting this up, I want you to imagine a 180 degree line. Essentially that leads from here all the way over to our bride and groom listening to the speech over here. I like to keep my cameras on one side. When it comes to positioning of your lighting, I think it really comes down to personal preference. I really enjoy a good 45 degree angle when it comes to these toasts. So if I'm looking at you, I'm looking at a 45 degree angle to my subject. The light is gonna hit this side of my face and have a little bit of fall off as it goes back. This is a look that Sharon from Fiora Films has really perfected and I've just fallen in love with. I think her lighting is second to absolutely none on the planet when it comes to wedding speeches. And so I would recommend you looking into that and perfecting it yourself. So let's um, turn on our Practilite using the Kinotenic app and we will see actually how it looks. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Michael's second wedding. <laughs> Marsha, you look great tonight. Okay, so now that we have our key light lighting our subject, let's see what adding a second light does to change the dynamic of our shot. But I love you, man. I'll always love you. Marsha, 
You're a good girl. You're a good girl. You got a good man in your hands. And I just, I can't wait for you guys to just bang out some old little Michaels just uh, running around the prairie. <laughs> Okay, so we have our key light, we have our backlight, and I really like the way that this shot has unfolded. Um, in this case, there's a lot of hair light, but in general, I think it looks pretty great. There's some fall off on the side of our subject's face, and uh, overall, a really great looking shot. Now let's talk about what this setup does for our bride and groom as they listen to this toast unfold. Okay, so this is where the bride and groom would sit, and as you can see, I'm sitting in some pretty good light. When you position both lights on the same plane, my backlight operates as the speaker's key light and vice versa. The backlight for the speaker acts as my key light. And I'll generally be looking this direction, so essentially right into the speaker and into my light, and then having a nice fall off on this side of our faces. In my opinion, a three shot of the bride and groom and the speaker is gonna be a little bit more challenging because I think there's a lot more variables to this. This table that they're sitting at could be a table that's a long table that has just 20 to 30 people at it, as opposed to just a single sweetheart table with the bride and groom. So I always think this is a little bit more challenging, but let's talk about what this setup is that we currently find ourselves in. They're gonna wanna be pretty close. I still like the idea of a microphone stand and I would recommend it to everybody because it just plants somebody here. It means they're not gonna go back and forth and get out of your shop. And I would just add to this section that if you can, you want to be a little bit of a control freak. And you know what, that's a little bit okay. Having conversations with DJ, with the photographer to make sure that your shot is gonna work with them as well is pretty important in this process and is definitely not to be overlooked. So let's talk a little bit about our lights. So if I was gonna have a camera angle where you're sitting right now, I would like my key light to be probably at a 40 degree angle. Um, and then I also have a fill light at probably a 40 degree angle. So that I'm getting a nice key light, getting a little bit of fall off and a little bit of fill on this side. And then same thing with my bride and groom over here. I think it's a pretty nice look. And then also if you wanted something that was a little bit more dramatic, you could simply go to my Kinotenic app, turn that down, turn my fill light down a little bit more and really have a nice dramatic look. But you're probably gonna get a little less fill on the bride and groom. So I think something in the middle is probably a good compromise for this setup. I don't know where the microphone is right now. I can't see a thing. And I can't think of a better man than Michael. Okay, so hopefully that was a little bit helpful. Hopefully it gave you just some ideas on how to light speeches for your weddings. Again, this is important for you to just experiment and find what works for you, whether it's color temperature, whether it's the height of your lights, whether it's just the lights that you're using in general. I think it's pretty tough to get a great looking lighting setup with cheaper lights that you can't fully control. Um, there are a couple quick tips that I'll just give you at the end of the video since you've been here for so long. And that's have an assistant. If you really wanna master lighting, having an assistant can help a ton. We're in a room with a ton of weird light bulbs where you're raising lights up or down. Light bulbs can cast a shadow on people's faces or random little floral arrangements, whatever it might be. Having someone to move that light just a smidge can be very important. The other thing that I would mention is Having a wedding planner, if you have a wedding planner, send you a layout of what everything looks like is a little bit of a cheat as well. That's gonna be an easy way for you to plan ahead of time, maybe talk it through with your assistant and really come up with a good game plan. Again, guys, hopefully this video has been helpful for you and at least given you a couple ideas on how you can better light your wedding toasts and speeches. If you've gotten anything out of this video, give us a like, a subscribe, you know all the things, tell your famous friends, and we'll see you here next time. Let's raise a glass to Michael and Marsha. Marsha, is that your name? Is that her name? <laughs> <laughs>